Hi everybody, Tyler Mahoney here, owner of Truman Lake Fishing Intel. Just want to give you a quick intro to the video you're about to watch. This is the second part to a two-part video that was recorded at a town hall meeting on February 19th. The topic the meeting was about was in regards to a very large solar panel project that is looking to be implemented in Henry County. So if you want to hear the full panel discussion, go look for part one and watch that. This is the Q&A portion. So this is when it was opened up to the audience to ask questions and get clarification on all the different things that are being said around this project to make sure everyone has the best and, and correct information. So, you know, we don't really have an opinion at all here at Truman Lake Fishing Intel one way or the other. We just felt like there's a large part of our audience based here in Henry County and, and maybe even some folks that might be directly impacted by this project. So we thought it'd be good to cover and make available for those of you that may not have been able to attend the meeting. So we hope you enjoy it and find it informative and thank you for watching. Okay, so I'm gonna just draw a name here or a number I guess it is, so get your tickets out. Um, the last four numbers are 5039. 5039. Go on, go on, go on. Nobody? I'll speak in there. I'll pass the question, please. That's all right. I'll go again. Okay, the last four numbers are 5142. Five one four two. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Rogier. Um, got a question about uh, one of the things is the money that uh, Rick Watson that you said a million dollars a year over was it twenty five years? Um, what percentage of your profits is that one million dollars? So you said that you need to know the fixed cost for, you know, how much everything costs. I assume you know the fixed cost for how much you'll be profiting. So what is that percentage? I'm asking you guys here. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, again, my name is Pete Endress. I'm with Ranger Power. Um, it's. I can't answer the question. I don't know what the percentage is. It varies on a case-by-case -case basis. Each project that we build, in this case Beavertail Solar, is operated as its own business, and they're all different. Um, so, But I can tell you that the, the, the property tax uh, portion of the project pro forma, what we call it, is a significant portion of the annual expenses for the project. Uh, can I follow up with that? Uh, so the million dollars, that's kind of like the grease the wheels with the community to, to get these installed. So you're doing a million dollar fixed rate over 25 years. As we know, inflation is good, you know, going through the roof. So a million dollars in five years could be nothing compared to what it is now. So. You know, and then also I wanted to ask, where are the solar panel panels coming from? Uh, is that coming from China? Is that, you know, are we helping to support them on this deal or, or what? There's a two percent compound multiplier every year. So two per, yeah, two percent is pretty low considering inflation's like nine, ten percent these days. days. You don't know what inflation is going to be from one year to the next, but, but that is what's built into it. Okay, 5031. Um, I was speaking for my parents. They were approached five, six years ago, asked, gave it a contract, attorneys left a contract, they said great. They were not harassed. They have not been bugged. <laughs> then they get their renewal contract with the suit. And, that, and they were not, there's no non disclosure. They were not told. Don't discuss it with your friend's neighbor. In fact, they went and said, hey, neighbor, mm -hmm. have you talked to them? 
hey neighbor, have you signed? So they weren't told to do that. So whatever people or other people were implying, they weren't. <laughs> All right, um, five zero eight two. Five zero eight two. You want to come up here and how many batteries, steel, concrete, rock are required for these projects? Who are you directing your question to? Ranger Power. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, the battery portion is zero. We're not proposing any batteries uh, for this project. As to the rest of the materials, um, steel, there's a lot. There's a lot of steel that goes into this project. There will be thousands and thousands of piles um, that support the solar panels and the racking. Um, and Jess, I'm sorry. What else? Concrete. Concrete, um, there's very little basically to none. So one of the beauties of the foundation of the solar system is that the piles themselves are driven into the ground and they do not require a concrete foundation that has to come out at the end of the life. So there could be basically the concrete that's part of a project is usually limited to some of the pads potentially for the inverters, uh, but sometimes those are even mounted on skid plates with zero concrete. Um, that's sort of case by case. And then the substation itself, where you tie into the electrical grid, that has a uh, concrete pad. Can I answer a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, there was a gentleman here asked a question earlier that I didn't get to answer about where panels are coming from. Okay. The short answer is we don't know. We haven't procured panels yet. Um, but it's no secret that many solar panels in this country are manufactured in Asian countries. However, it's also true that more and more uh, solar panels are being manufactured domestically. And a big reason for that is because we have a huge supply chain shortage. The solar industry has grown tremendously in the past roughly decade. Um, and we need more domestic manufacturing. That's just a fact. So um, a great thing that's happening in the solar industry is that more and more uh, panels are being manufactured domestically. There are hundreds of millions, if not billions, of dollars being invested uh, in domestic production. And we hope to buy from those facilities. You hope. We hope. But, we can't say for sure. But okay, go with the five, one, four, zero. Five, one, four, zero. Five one one two. <coughs> Anybody? Five one one two. My question for Granger Power: um, Are you planning to build the panels on old KCP no ground? Are they going there, and how many acres would that be of the 5,000 or 4,000 you need? Can you all hear me if I speak without a mic? Yeah. That might be a little quicker. Um, uh, we are not planning on building on the old Evergreen ground at all. Does that, does that answer your question? not building on our light ground at all. No, not at all. All one individual. Correct. Thank you. Okay. I'll get over here. Five one one zero. Five one one zero. Maybe the questions have already been answered. Five zero two five. This is a question for Rick. Um, up to this point, I think that the commission hasn't been very transparent with what everything's going on here. And my question is, 
if enough people oppose this going forward, will it be? Will you put it to a vote for the people in the count in the township? That would have to go through the township, not through the commission. But will there be? If enough people oppose, do you know? Will it go to a vote? If there's a petition signed that enough people oppose. Will it go to a vote? Well, it would have to be petitioned to be put on a ballot. You mean go on to a ballot? Yes. Um, it would be petitioned to yeah, the township. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the mic, Rick. It would be petitioned to the township to put it on the ballot. So it would be a Davis Township or a Walker Township question, not a countywide question. Why? That's not Why? right. Well, it's going to Henry County. That's right. Yeah. Well, it would have to be petitioned countywide then. And it would be a bigger number that you would have to uh, get to sign the petition. Yeah, I don't think that would be a county question. How many signatures are required? Five percent of the governor's race four years ago. It can be put to a township vote, not a county, with enough with the petition and enough signatures. Five zero eight seven. Five zero eight seven. Oh. I'll just walk out. Okay. That's all right. Is this already written in stone that it's going to go on through? We're wasting our time here, or is are we going to bring it up to stone? Can you repeat? Is this already written in stone, or can it be put to a vote? Well, the county does not have a countywide planning and zoning. Um, so, so Davis Township does not have a planning and zoning. Walker Township does. Um, I, I don't think there's time to go to a vote because the next election would be in August. It'd be certified in May. Um, so you'd be you'd be wanting to create a planning and zoning ordinance for the county is what you'd want to be doing. I, I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up, but I don't know if that's a, a, something that would go to the vote. That might be something that the commission just adopts. I'm not real sure. Okay, 5029. Oh, that's me. Oh. So, if I understand this correctly, the, uh, the power company is not going to technically own the leases. They're going to be leasing back from, explain that to me again. How's the county? The county gives the benefit of having the tax abatement. So the county is going to become a party to this agreement in order to give the power company the benefit of those tax breaks. Is that right? So has the, has the county commission on behalf of the people of Henry County already made a deal with the power company to go ahead and do that regardless of what everybody in this room wants? That has not occurred yet, but we are probably, as we, the commission is, is probably going to sign a road maintenance agreement next week. So the commissioners are going to make, so the commissioners, if I understand it correctly, the commissioners can say, we're not going to make this deal because we're looking at a room full of people that don't want it to happen, so we're, they're going to go ahead and sign that even, even though there's a bunch of people. Who are all opposed to it? I agree with all Everybody in here is. So, so the county commission is going to go ahead and vote yes for it, even though maybe there will be a public hearing to adopt the chapter 100. That, that's required. When? Uh, the road maintenance agreement is different than than the um, <laughs> chapter 100. <clears throat> so that would be months down the road before that chapter 100 gets, gets uh, in the works. Can I? I just wanted to comment on the road use agreement. Um, this is something that we commonly do across many of our projects, in fact, pretty much all of them. We are committed um, very sincerely to repairing any roads that get damaged during construction, which is typically when it happens, not so much during operations. But the point is, we want, we, this is something we volunteered to the county, to the commissioners. So we are putting in writing our commitment that road damages, if they occur, 
are going to be paid for by us, not you as taxpayers. So this is a benefit that we're offering uh, to the county. I just wanted to be clear about that. And it's voluntary on our part. You know, one other thing about the uh, the Chapter 100, the tax abatement, is is they don't need they don't need that. Um, they they were, they're wanting to know what their fixed costs are. So there's no reason why they have to have that Chapter 100. They can build now without the commission because we do not have a planning and zoning. They are being uh, good neighbors and wanting to fix set their their costs and also pay the public entities at the same time. They're, and kind of Did that answer your question? Oh, I think it kind of did, yeah. I mean, it sounds to me like the county commission can just say, no, we're not going to enter into that agreement. Yeah, sure, they can go into it in Davis, <laughs> not so much in Walker right now. Uh, it sounds like the county commission, if I understand it correctly, is all for it, so they're going to go forward with the <laughs> Well, I'm not going to speak for them, but I believe that we are all in support of it. <laughs> okay. Five one two nine. Yeah. So you know, a lot of this uh, government's going green, and with all your solar panels, you're trying to eliminate the coal power plants. But with the thousands and thousands of acres of black solar plant or solar panels, you guys are creating heat, which is global warming. But you're trying to eliminate global warming. But you're creating it with all your black solar panels. <laughs> Have you guys done any studies on that? <coughs> on how much heat all your solar panels create? Yeah, there's some talk that we've seen, uh, and you can read about it on the internet, among many other things on the internet. I can't read, just tell me that. Okay, so what you're describing is what's called like a heat island effect, um, and what and some people talk about it. I mean, solar panels, if you were in the middle of a hot summer day, if you touch the surface of them, they would probably be hot. But their job is to absorb sunlight. It is not to reflect sunlight. If they're reflecting sunlight, they're not doing their job. Um, and they're coated with an anti-glare uh, uh, material to help them absorb that sunlight. And to the heat island effect, that's something that's been studied. To our knowledge, there's absolutely no um, documented effect of that. It's just something that we have seen as a potential. Uh, but we, I've not seen any evidence of it at all. And there are now hundreds of solar farms, if not more, built around the country. Um, if that helps put your mind at ease. It does. Okay. <laughs> Five zero seven seven. Uh, why do all you guys do not attempt building on a town, uh, a town at, the, at the old town plant? It is already contaminated land. Right, Okay, this sh yeah, thank you. Um, the short answer is it's not, um, it's not property that we approach to be part of the project. Um, and also contaminated land has its own issues. Um, sometimes it's sealed and uh, capped for good reason to prevent anything from poking holes in it. Um, so contaminated land can be very difficult to build on. 5098. 5098? 5121. Okay, if I was to lease my land to Ranger Power, um, for one, the county owns the panels in, so if everybody's broken in, the county got to pay to take the panels off. And then my next question is, if a hailstorm comes through and knocks out half the panels and they're out of production, do I get my lease on that during that time? Second part of your question, yes, you do. Um, 
first part of the question is the county under the chapter 100 um, structure, which I think is what you're getting at, there's a sale and a lease back. So um, on paper, while the county may own the assets in the project, they have virtually no rights to them. So there's, as Rick mentioned earlier, there's no cost, there's no liabilities, there's no obligations on the part of the county. Um, and the decommissioning cost is fully borne by us. Um, and that's secured through either a surety bond or a performance bond or a letter of credit or sometimes cash and escrow. Any of those things can be put aside to make sure that the money is there to remove the project. And that's at no cost to the county. It's uh, typically reevaluated every five years throughout the life of the project. So you have a true up okay. and it changes over time. 5066. Six. Oh, I'll address this to Rick. If a landowner leases their property to this company, do they lose their agricultural assessment on that ground? Is that, is that written somewhere? Scott, the assessor, might be able to address that. Scott item. here? Yeah. Okay. Scott, you're from Okay, Scott, if a landowner leases to a silver company, do they lose their agricultural assessment on that ground? I think it all depends on how the okay. Chapter 100 is written, but it's my understanding in general that the land that is being utilized for the solar panel will basically, for lack of a better word, become exempt because it will be covered by the payment in lieu of taxes. So they won't have, they will not incur any taxes on that portion of the property. But at any time later, I mean, it's 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 use, not not what it is. It's how it's being used. Um, so if it if it's gone back to agriculture at the end of the 25 years or the 30 years or whatever, it all goes right back to agriculture. So the property owner won't pay any taxes on that? And I would have to defer to the way the chapter 100 is written, but that's my understanding. On, on, on that portion, because it'll be covered by the uh, payment in lieu of taxes. Um, but that, that's my understanding, and they can correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. Uh, 5070 5134 yep. Okay, this is to Ranger Power. I was schooled by a resident of Texas. And they have a lot of solar and wind down there. And we all know how that turned out a few years ago. Um, I was told that their electric rates doubled since all this renewable energy. How does that work out? Yeah. Um, I guess to answer the question, I'm going to speak a, a little bit more generally to what's um, happened in the power industry or power sector for the past now over 20 years, 25 years. There are basically three forms of um, bulk power that are going onto the grid. And this has been the case for a couple decades now. That's wind, solar, and to a lesser extent, natural gas. Um, wind and solar have the advantage, um, unlike maybe some things you've heard tonight, that they have a zero cost to their fuel. That doesn't mean that there's no operating costs. There are some operating costs. Like for example, with solar farms, you have to mow underneath them. So there are some operating costs. But your wind and solar are not subject to the volatility that we all suffer at the pumps sometimes, right? We can't predict exactly what's gonna happen um, with fossil fuel prices or, or other conventional fuels. So over time, wind and solar will have the effect of um, a hedge being a hedge against uh, fossil fuel pricing and should help bring power prices down 
That does not happen overnight, um, but it can happen over time. 5128. 5128. 5043. 5043. I'm just going to do a few more. We're going to be done here. 5040. 5040. 5045. Five. All your questions already answered. 5063. Yeah, I was just going to have you clarify. There was some data presented that. The solar was vastly more expensive, and I think you guys at Ranger Power presented something earlier that it was fairly cheap. So I was hoping you could clarify some of the data on that, as well as elaborate and clarify a little bit further. Uh, it was brought up about the disposal costs, who's going to be on the hook at the end, what happens if you guys go out of business, um, and you mentioned putting a um, some money up front down. Um, also, if you can elaborate further on that, how much is that? Is that going to cover it 50 years down the road? Um, anyway, that's the gist. Okay, let me try to hit that. On, on the disposal costs, um, the obligation is on, in this case, Beavertail Solar, which is a limited liability company. It holds all of the contracts and the other assets in the project. So Beavertail Solar, in other words, will own not only the leases, but also the solar panels and the racking and everything else um, that adds up to the full value of the project. It also has the decommissioning obligation. And so it has to post a surety bond or a letter of credit or whatever it may be to, to assure that the project's going to be decommissioned. Um, that entity is isolated entirely from Ranger or any other company that, for example, could go bankrupt. Um, and so once that project is fully um, monetized and it has a lot of assets, there's really strong security that the project um, decommissioning benefits will actually be met because it's, it's posted its own bond that's held with you know, um, high credit agencies. Does that answer that part of it? Okay. Do you have anything else? Did I miss anything? Uh, the just some of the data that you had that talks about the cheaper how solar's che cheaper, but some of the data they presented was it's vastly more expensive. Yeah, um, you certainly hear arguments about this, um, but I think the <sighs> solar it has a high capital cost to build, but one of the benefits is that over time it has a very low and also very predictable operating cost. So once it's built, you can run it at a very um, predictable and low cost. Um, and because of that, when you, when you break all of the cost of the system down into um, basically a cost per megawatt hour, it is among the most competitive, if not the most competitive, that you can build in this country right now. And ultimately, that saves us all on, on rates. 5065. Yeah, they want you to have water. Uh, what what power company would be the primary customer for the solar farm? Solar farm. Uh, I'm sure, um, that's a good question. Um, we we can't build a project without getting it contracted um, for the sale of the electricity. That's what we would take to the bank to get it financed and built. Um, and the folks who buy power at the scale that we're producing it are utilities. Um, so in this neck of the woods, it's Evergy, but in other parts of Missouri, it might be Ameren or others. Um, there are also more and more these days, large corporations. Um, the Googles, the Amazons, the Facebooks of the world, who um, the uh, Bitcoin uh, operations that were brought up earlier, 
all of those entities are looking to wind and solar as a way to hedge their their electric costs, basically looking into the future. Do you have any contracts in place? Yeah. We have a contract for phase one, yeah. With Where, that's, where's it going? I cannot disclose that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, um, I got a, I got a follow up. Okay, question. just a minute. Uh, I've stood up here a long time and I've done a lot of walking, so I'm going to say something. Good. Okay. I can tell you this. If you have signed your land up and you're all for it, then you're all for it. If you are not, then you need to speak up. You need to call your commissioners. You need to call your people that are in office. And you need to stand up and make a difference. And people, your townships that are zoned, they have a little bit more leg up on these companies than they want us to think they, that we do. But we do. We did the zoning for a reason. And there are other townships that are zoned around us. And if they take the solar panels and they put them in one area, Davis, that's not zoned, and they, they're not going to keep them just right there. They want to move them. They want to move them to Walker, to White Oak, to Spruce over in Bates. And those townships are zoned. So if you don't like this, you need to speak up. It's your right. And if you don't do it, then it's just going to go right on. So I had my two cents, so. All right, I got a follow-up question. Sir, when I asked you what the percentage of that $1 million was, you said you're not sure, but you've got a contract, so you know how much you're making. You told him over here that uh, you knew how much it would cost to maintain them. So you've got your fixed prices, you've got your fixed contract. How is it you can't tell us what the percentage of that $1 million is? Because it sounds like if you're making this deal for $1 million a year over 25 years, you're making sure no one can come back and tax you for even more later. So you're making a great deal and you're flashing this million dollars in front of our, you know, the commissioner's faces and everything. And you know exactly how much that percentage is because you just said you got, you know how much it all costs, you know how much the contract is. So tell us what is the percentage that you're using to grease the wheels with the community. I, I can't answer that. You can. You told us you knew all aspects of the cost. Sir, I don't know. Okay. Wow. So we're in the, we're done with the lottery part of it and we're going to... You don't know the contract. If someone, if, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Uh, my name is Gary Wood. Everybody calls me Wood. And there was some talk earlier about eminent domain. It says right here, a uh, Republican from Pleasant Hill says that there's a loophole in the Missouri statute that allows you to take your neighbor's land not only to expand your solar farm, but to connect to the power grid. Now, how would he go about doing that if it in eminent domain? Anybody can answer. Well, right now, that representative um, has, it's called Senate Bill 1052. Okay. All right? And it, it came up this last time, and it didn't make it to a vote. And it takes away that if you're, if you have enough, if your land, uh, makes enough megawatts or whatever it is that you can uh, consider yourself a power utility that's where the loophole is they can take your land whether you want it or not yeah. on either side of you but he's fighting that and it, like I said it's Senate Bill 1052 it's back up on the floor again but it has not come to a vote so um, there again pardon it hasn't, even got to it hasn't even got to committee yet so there again you know, we need to speak up. We need to say something. Um, call the representative in Pleasant Hill, Mike Hackner. Uh, <laughs> ask them. Ask them what you can do. I got one more thing. Okay. You was had, you was talking about the you, Mr. Bates. Anyway, you was talking about the impact on wildlife and birds and stuff. I'll guarantee you, if you put a solar farm on any of this ground. I'll guarantee you that the ducks, the, bir the birds, the 
geese, everything else, they know what this ground looks like. And they're going to change. They'll change their migratory status. And the deer, if, I don't know where you got that an eight foot fence will stop a deer, but it won't. <laughs> Believe you me, I've seen it in person in Florida. And then they aren't very big. But out of station, Dell Air Force Base, we had a nine foot perimeter fence with three Constantine wires on top of that. And I've seen it. Hey, He's talking about the, the impact it's going to have on the wildlife, and it will. Okay, um, now, if there's someone in here just itching to ask the question, your number didn't get called, and you haven't already asked one already, I'm going to let you ask one. This question is for Brent Watson. You work, that up here. you work for Henry County? Yes, sir. So are you guys excited about this? I think it's a great opportunity for the landowners and, and landowners. I'm a landowner. I have 220 acres in Henry County. I'm not excited about it. Let me ask you another question. You're so excited about it, but you failed to tell anybody about it for four years. Yeah. yeah. Well, why are you so excited? They have met with the commission. It's been an open session. No, this is, hey, hey, it's never no, been no, You no, never told me. No, 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 there are all kinds of uh, economic development things going on in Henry County. That not to this effect. You have you have to be serious. Look at look at the faces. You got twelve people out here. who are going to benefit. Twelve people are going to benefit from this. You got the rest of them or not? I'm, I'm who, sorry. Who do you work for? We work, you work for these guys? We work for yeah. no, 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 you. No, you don't. You said you work for us. But you don't want to put it to a vote because you waited for five years to tell people about this. What? They didn't even sit there. No, you just smile. It's a fact. I understand what the vote. You, are you wanting to We're vote? vote. We, don't, we don't want it here. Uh, do you understand that? I don't know. So why did you wait five years to tell these good people uh, that, that information? <laughs> yeah, I can tell you why. Because I'm listening to everybody here. You thought you'd slide it through, you'd get a million dollars in here for all these people, and they ain't going to meet the hell of beans in ten years. These people who are selling are not even going to be here. We're going to be living with it. Are you going to compensate my land over here? I built a brand new home here three years ago. About 220 acres, spent close to a million dollars building that home. Are you going to compensate me for that loss? That's a question. Yeah. Sir, I understand that there's a lot of emotion no, involved. No, no, no. Absolutely. It is all emotional. It is all emotional. But you were so I understand. emotional. I totally understand. You were so emotional. You said there's not going to be a vote. No. It's done. You guys don't. You shouldn't even showed up here tonight. Where, yeah. The commissioners. Why is the three commissioners up there speaking? Yeah. Say it, I did. Yeah. You are You're up the vote, right? I will. Okay, you guys hear that? Yeah. He's, he's running for office. Oh, not anymore. That's yeah. all I got. All right, Ray, get two minutes over. Let me ask Ray one, one thing, just kind of as a follow up of the questions I asked before. <laughs> So I asked before uh, if the county commission has to agree to this Chapter 100 deal. Uh, is Ranger Power going to go forward with this project if the county commission does not agree to the Chapter 100 deal? Yeah, as Rick mentioned earlier, we can proceed. Uh, there's, there. I, I'll just but add. Will you? Will you? Yeah. yeah. Yes, we will. There, there are benefits that you, you guys should no. realize from the chapter 100, and there, no. this has to do with um, our current business model. We're in the long-term ownership business, so we anticipate owning and operating this project. But no. sometimes projects are sold, and sometimes mm -hmm. companies like Evergy, who's a regulated utility. Might want to own and operate the project themselves. If that happens under Missouri law, uh, the property is what's called centrally assessed, which means that taxes that are paid, property taxes that are paid, are spread out among a bigger area. 
than just say Henry County or the taxing units where the project is located. And so under the Chapter 100 deal, one main benefit to the county and you as taxpayers is all of the revenue that is paid stays local, where the project is located. It is never going to be centrally assessed and that money is going to go to other taxing units. So I just wanted to add that's one big benefit from an economic development standpoint of that um, Chapter 100 allowance. Okay. Kurt, I mean, Ryan. Earlier you asked, answered the question about having contracts with local utilities, whether it be Evergy, whether it be a real co-op, Osage Valley, whoever. And you could disclose who that was. Are you going to be a member of the Southwest Power Pool? Our project does interconnect to the Southwest Power Pool. Yes. <laughs> so how is that going to save us any money if you're selling the power to Southwest Power Pool and you said our rates would be cheaper? Then how is that going to help us if you're selling it on the wholesale market? Yeah, Southwest Power Pool is not a customer. They're a, they're a grid operator. They help manage the grid. They operate the grid. I yeah. understand that. I know. But you're going to sell on the wholesale market. You're not going to sell retail to Joe Blow, guy over here. Correct. You're going to sell wholesale. It isn't going to affect our bill one iota. I, I have not said that. No, of course not. Come on up here. Uh, so my question is, is anyone on the commission that is super excited about this, does anybody live anywhere near where these uh, solar panels are going to be? Are they going to have to look at it? And uh, next question is, guy in the khaki, uh, where do you live? And if someone came in and said, hey, uh, I'm going to put this ugly thing in your backyard and I'm going to do you a favor by making you think that you have an option, but even if you don't like it, we're going to do it anyway. Is that something you'd be okay with? Cause... And decreasing your property value? Yeah. I'm not even sure that needed an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I need it because I yeah, talked about it. Yeah, hold it up. Hold it up, sir. Uh, I'm Chuck Thomas. I live over here in the county. I've got land. Uh, guess what? I'm also a solar panel owner. Uh, no. That's all I can say. You know why? Because the company made me sign a no disclosure statement so that they would come out and make the panels produce exactly what they said in the contract that it would produce and it would go back through the line. Failed. Massively. My land is worthless. The panels are worthless. Folks, I don't care where you stand. I got them. They're worthless. They don't do anything. And as a matter of fact, they haven't hit the target yet and I've had them for two years. They haven't hit target not once. Not once. Don't let them do it. Okay. Come on up here. You need the microphone. So you guys are talking about this being a project and it's a subsidiary that you might sell it to at a later date. What level of commitment that you're making to us as a community and tax revenue and you know how you're going to handle things, what your ethical standpoints are, what if that is actually going to transfer to whoever you sell it to? That's a good question. Um, and thanks for asking it. So all of the, if there were um, ever a, a sale like you're describing, all of the contracts that are part of the project would be, would be transferred. So all the contracts with their obligations, payment terms, whatever it may be, would go to a new owner. Um, I, do want to re I do want to reiterate that that is not our intent. 
we're in the long-term ownership business, and we've done this on many other projects in the country. Um, and so that's not our intent, but it can happen. So um, we are, uh, Rangers partnered with uh, an ownership company that uh, runs over 75 wind and solar projects in the United States. So um, the, still own yeah, yeah, but over 75. 75 okay. Yeah, and we That's the only projects that we would typically sell would be in markets where the utilities want to own um, their own generation, and they have the ability to do that. So occasionally that can happen. Um, so we'll manage construction for them uh, or and sell it basically at operation. But that's by far the minority of the projects that we're involved in. Is it okay. accessible for that information on the website if somebody wanted to look into what you all have built and It's probably out there somewhere. I did it well. Okay, I thought I'd come over here. I've been spending most of my time over there. Um, pretty simple question. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a ranger, maybe Rick, you can answer this. Who are the regulatory agencies that regulate this industry? That's a great question. Um, we ha there are a lot. Um, we at the state level, uh, we we deal with primarily the Missouri Department of Conservation and the Department of Natural Resources on any sort of wildlife or wetlands or anything like that. We do a variety of studies that we submit to them and get their concurrence, basically, that the project is, going, is not going to have any uh, real impact. At the federal level, we deal with primarily the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Army Corps of Engineers for the same set of issues. But there are federally protected species and then there's state protected species. And also wetlands are governed at both federal and state levels. Um, there's various other bodies that we deal with. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is involved in some ways. There's grid operators, Southwest Power Pool came up earlier. Um, uh, that's another entity that we deal with. Um, and in, in addition, we have at the local level, we have county and townships that we deal with. Okay, someone over here? My name is Nicholas Uh I just have a question about when it comes to like the fires and stuff, because I have a lot of times our first responders in this county. Uh, what would, is there training that we can get involved with for you guys, or how would that work out? And my other question is, like my grandfather, he's been farming this night forever. Um, is there a possibility that, like, as years go on, there's like, from what you guys have seen so far and for a lot of people in this area, has there been a big demolish of growth when it comes to like wildlife and stuff? Have you seen the effects of it? Yeah, so as to the fire part of the question, we'll absolutely, we are 100% committed to training with local fire and other emergency personnel. We will sit down prior to construction or earlier if folks want to do training and uh, informational sessions to get folks the knowledge that they need. So we're 100% committed to that. Um, and I know I'm being videotaped, so you can go back to that. Um, no, not no, sir, not yet. Um, but we are happy to have those conversations at any time. Um, as to the wildlife um, part of your question, I mean that's really where these state and federal agencies come in. So we have to do a whole set of studies, wetlands, habitat assessment, bird counts, um, all you name it. Uh, we we document the entire footprint of the project area. And then we submit essentially a risk assessment to those agencies for their review and get a concurrence back on our level of impact. And we keep that as low as possible. Okay, I think we're going to wrap this up.
Um, so, all right, I'm going to take one more over here. Policies from the United Nations. Okay, all of this is blue energy. Uh, and then let's start. Um, they've got ESG and environmental, social, and government policies from the United Nations. It's mandated by the United Nations. ESG credits. These companies will get monetary credits for what they're doing to us. It is largely for the companies and not the people. Read about ESG in the United Nations. This has been bugging me for years even. I see all these people. How many of you own Property in Davis or Walker Township. I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then now back. This goes back decades. So you might remember we had a zoning bill come up year I mean, years ago and was voted down. Well, I mean, I mean, Henry County wise. So if you're from the county, you probably might have voted it down. And then, so. Think about complaining now. You should have thought of it. I don't know what it was, 20, 30 years ago? So. There's a lot of counties that are not zoned. No, I, I'm sorry, sir, I can't. Okay, Paul, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to be a little bit. Maybe I better go. Okay. That's all right. Not much. Not much. Not much. This is Paul. It's been in the making for four or five years. How much actual ground has y'all got rid of out of the 5,000? Let it be. Okay. Okay. Hold that up there. Probably two months ago, one of my neighbors said that they were going to meet with the commission in Center Clinton. They wanted to talk to me. They said, be here at 9.30, you can talk. <laughs> I was asked to come up, so I went in there, I straight up 9 o'clock, opened the door. The people. I sat on an in chair, still quietly. Uh, Mr. Stone, the planning commissioner, had a few words, and then Rick gave us a sales pitch, just like he did, just like he did this evening, or this morning, or tonight. I got, I had another point at ten, and a health issue I had to do. So at six minutes to ten, I raised up on my chair and it got real quiet. I had my coat there, I picked it up and turned around and. Rick was looking at him, the commissioner said, I almost said something to Rick, and I did a good job. And then I asked him, I said, Rick, where do you live? He said, I live in the country. He said, so proud of life. And I said, uh, okay, can I ask you a question? Sure. I said, what was you think? I said, a 100 acre farm or 200 acres, right across the road from your house, in solar panels, would you like that? He didn't even have to think. He said, no, I would not like that at all. They just trying to sell. We out there where there are so I was there, I heard him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. We have to put it off sometimes. So listen, again, um, again, if you you have to speak up, you have to you have to um, you can sign your just your name and address, phone is all we ask. If there's anything that comes up and we can you know we can do something else, we'll, we'll contact you. But uh, again, you've got to speak up and speak to your own commissioners, representatives, and do your and do your part so we can uh, make wise decisions on this. Thank you for coming. And um, like I said, if you're not in a hurry, you could help stack a few chairs for the guys. <laughs>